Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So CSIR December 2025 notifications are out and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this exam in this particular video. We'll talk about when we can expect the exam. We'll be talking about what is the eligibility criteria, who can apply and all the things related to that. So let's start with it. First of all, this is the website. I will give you a link to reach out to this website in the description of this video. You can directly come up to this particular website. And if you see in the public notices, it says inviting online applications for joint CSIR UGC net December 2025 exam. If you click on this, you will be able to download a PDF file which has all the details uh, re like regarding it. So basically, it says that your online submission of application form through uh, the website, which is this website. I'll again show you this website as well. So it will start from 25th of September and it will go till 24th of October. So you have a one month time duration to apply for this particular form. Last date for the successful trans transaction for fee payment is 25th of October. Okay. Uh, you can make corrections uh, during this window. So from 27th to 29th will be the correction window for the application fee and uh, your admit card, city intimation sleep, all these will be declared on the website later on okay uh, the date of examination is set to be 18th of december so unlike previous few cycles when we used to have exams on multiple days this year we are going to have exam on a single day so that is interesting it is coming after a long uh, duration or i mean after a long cycle uh, exam is going to be of uh, 180 minutes it will be in two shifts shift one and two so some subjects will be conducted in shift one some will be in shift two and uh, response sheet and all this will be like intimated later. These are the subjects and the exam is going to be English and Hindi both. And uh, the websites are given over here. Okay, so this is the basic information which you need to know. So you, if you want to apply for it, you can apply between 25th of September to 24th of October. Now let us talk about it in more detail. All right. So there is a detailed um, like brochure for it so this is a detailed brochure for CSIR December 2025 exam I have highlighted few things which are important for us so I'll only talk about that it is a 81 page brochure it has all the things related to exam you can read about it if you have time but I have just summarized things for you so that it becomes easy for you, right so these are different annexures given to you like uh, certificates like OBC certificate, SCSA certificate. All these are actually already provided to you. So in case if you want to apply for them, make sure that your certificates are in this particular format. Okay, Coming down, so some abbreviations are given, but let's go to the important thing. So these things we have already discussed like uh, uh, when the exam is going to be, what is the schedule of exam and all the things. Okay? So that is already discussed. Let us talk about the examination fee. Okay, so how much money you have to pay to fill this form. So for general category, the examination fee is 1150. Uh, for general EWS candidate and for OBC candidates, the fee is now 600 rupees. For SCST candidate, PWD candidate and candidates belonging to the third gender, the fee is 325 rupees. So this is how much you have to pay to apply for this particular form every year is extending which is fine we can't say anything for that okay so there will be two shift in exam 9 a.m to 2 12 noon and 3 p.m to 6 p.m most probably chemistry will be in the second shift okay that's what i believe so then let's talk about the other things which are mentioned let's talk about the stipend so for jrf if you qualify for jrf you are going to get a stipend of 37,000 rupees plus 20,000 will be given to you as a contingency amount which you can use to uh, like purchase your lab supplies and your stationaries related to your research. One important thing which is over here is that the eligibility will be determined in this particular manner. This table has basically made the things easier for you to understand. There will be three category of result. One will be award of JRF and appointment as assistant professor, which will be having the highest cutoff. Then category two, which will have appointment as assistant professor and admission to PhD. And there will be third category, which will have lowest cutoff, which will be admission to PhD only. So what are the like, what are the benefits or what are the perks of qualifying in category one? So if you qualify category one, you will be considered as JRF. You will get the fellowship. You can apply for assistant professor also and you can apply for PhD also. Okay, so all the benefits you are going to get, that's the best thing which you can do. 
Now, category two are not going to be getting the JRF amount. If they do their PhD, they will not be getting that 37,000 rupees as their stipend, but they can apply for assistant professor later and they can also do PhD. The third category is not eligible to get that 37,000 as a stipend. Neither they can apply for assistant professor later on, but they can apply for PhD and they can do their PhD. Okay, so these are the three categories and I think this is clear to you. All right, the next important thing is about eligibility criteria. So for general category, unreserved and EWS category students, the eligibility is that you need to have 55% without rounding off in your master's degree okay and uh, this should be done from recognized university institute so basically 55 percent in your master's is what it is required if you belong to a bc category non-creamy layer SST category or pwd category or third uh like gender in that case you will be getting like the eligibility for you will be 50 percent marks okay so that's the eligibility for it if your percentage master's percentage is below this you cannot apply for this exam if you are pursuing masters, if you are in final year of masters, or even if you are enrolled in masters, you can apply for this particular exam, but you will only get this certificate once you fulfill these criteria. Like you will, you can apply for this certificate after finishing your master. So basically, if you are or like a master's student, you are already in masters, you can apply for it. Don't, you don't have to wait for your masters to get completed and then apply. You can apply under result awaited category. Next, let's talk about the age limit. So for JRF, the upper age limit is 30 years now. It has been increased. We are seeing this upper age limit, increase in upper age limit since like last two years. So it is increased from 28 to 30 years and it is continued till now. So if your age is 30 years or less up to the first day of, of the month in which the exam is going to be, that means on 1st of December 2025, your age should not be more than 30 years. That's what they, they are trying to say. Okay. So that's for the general category. For uh, OBC category, students who belong to non creamy layer, as well as for SHJ category, for PWD category, for uh, students belonging to the third gender, for all these categories, and also for the women applicants, there is a five year relaxation given. Okay. So your age should not be more than 35 years when you're applying for it. And this eligibility is only for JRF. You can still give this exam, but you cannot apply for JRF. You can apply for assistant professor or PhD only category. That is, you can go for category two or category three if your age is higher than that. So there is no upper age limit for applying for assistant professor and there is no upper age limit for applying for PhD. In case if you are willing to give this exam only to get a net degree so that you can apply for assistant professor later, it does not belong to what age you you have okay so there is no age limit for that so this should be very clear to you let's talk about the next important thing that the exam will be in cbt mode as it is being taken and the pa paper pattern is entirely same three sections of exam part a part b and part c part a of 20 questions 15 you have to do uh, part b 40 questions 35 you have to do part c 60 questions, 25 you have to do and that's how it is divided. Okay, negative marking is 0.5 for 2 marker questions and 1 marks for 4 marker questions. Okay, I already explained about it but there is just one point I just wanted to tell that in case if somebody answers more than the like uh, questions which are there in a particular section, for example, if somebody marks more than 15 questions in part A, then only first 15 questions will be uh, evaluated generally the software is made in such a way that you cannot click on the 16th question even if you try to click on the 16th question it will tell you that you already marked 15 question and you cannot mark more you have to unmark some other to mark the 15th one that's how the interface of csir exam works the next important thing is about medium of examination so the paper will be in bilingual that is hindi and english both and uh, while filling the form you can choose that in which language you want to give paper but in case of any ambiguity, if there is a question where you are not able to understand what exactly it wants to say, then English version will be used as the final version or will be treated as the final version. Even if there is some difference in the values, Hindi version will not be considered as the final one. English one will be considered as the final one. Okay, That's what has been made very clear over here. Okay, from page 38 onwards, you will get all these annexures like uh, if you are applying for uh, like uh, you are applying for your own scribe in case your uh, like disability is more than 40% you get uh, an extra for that uh, even you get it like different annexures are there different certificates are there 
letter for undertaking of own scribe and all these things are given so you can look upon it and the rest of the brochure is about form filling if you want i will make a like detailed video on how to fill the form but that's it for this video okay i just wanted to let you guys know about this that the application forms are out and uh, what are the eligibility and related stuffs i hope that is clear to you if you have any other question you can ask me in the comment section below that's it from my side for this particular video i'm super excited that the exam is being conducted in december this is something very good which csr is doing and i'm very happy with that because if you know me if you have been following my channel i have been talking about it that this has been a very old habit of csir now it's like from previous three four cycle that exam is not being conducted on time but uh, like let's not get jinx about it but yeah this time the exam is getting uh, conducted on time and hopefully the exam cycle will be uh, better now so hoping for all the best wishing you all the best take care and see you guys in the next video have a good day bye bye